You suck. What's up? Matt from Oatfab here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about synergic MIG welders or auto setting uh, MIG machines and why they're not exactly what they're made out to be. I've been teaching people to weld for quite a while now. One of the common questions that comes up is, is one of these machines going to make me better or I've bought one of these auto setting machines and I still can't get the results I want. All right, so this little Jazzic MIG 160, you can use this in uh, manual mode where we've got meters a minute. This is our wire feed speed. And then we've got our voltage below. What I'll show you is how you use the uh, setup guide chart inside to set this to your required setting for different thicknesses, different materials. This particular machine has got the synergic function, which if you press that, you can see it's given us an amperage reading at the top. And then as I adjust this, it's essentially adjusting the voltage for me. Some machines will give you a material thickness gauge here. Some machines will just give you the wire feed speed um, but ultimately what it's doing is just balancing the two values for you. That's called a synergic function or auto setting. But in that auto function, I can also adjust my voltage manually. So this would be known as trim or voltage trim. So it's the ability to fine tune the auto setting. The synergic auto settings in this machine are actually quite good. Uh, some of them are terrible, so you really need to know how to use this trim to be able to get the best out of the machine, even if you are using the auto setting. So any machine you buy normally will come with a chart. This gives you all the information that you need to know, so you're basically just going to work from one side to the other side of the chart, starting off with your material, wire type, polarity, gas flow, um, if you're welding steel, which we are, you can only pick these options here. ER70S6, common uh, MIG welding wire that we're using. Polarity, you're always going to be electropositive with a MIG unless you're doing gasless. And then, based on the gas type you're using, because the gas will have an effect on the settings that you're using. So if we're on argon CO2 mix, which we are here, we've got this window across the top. To follow. Next one, wire diameter. The diameter of the wire is obviously going to affect the settings of wire feed and voltage. We'll get into that in a minute. So we're 0.8, so that means we've only got this section across here. Up here is giving us our material thickness. In each one of these boxes, you've got two numbers. One is a wire feed speed in meters per minute. The other is your voltage. This setup information is intended to act as a guide only. And that's really important. It is a guide. It's not a definitive setting because two mil welded in a fillet joint and two mil welded in a butt joint would actually require different settings. So what's this got to do with the automatic synergic settings? All the synergic setting is, is a feature where it's putting this information in for you automatically. You would still have to tell it what you're welding. You would still have to tell it what size wire you're using. But it's, it's essentially a program that is just giving you these values based on your inputs. It's not some highly intelligent robot that knows what you're doing. And some brands have it quite accurate where it is almost to the point where you can just set it and go. And other brands, it's almost useless. We've got a few things to select at the bottom. Stick welding, TIG welding, MIG welding at the top. Uh, steel, argon CO2. This we can adjust what wire feed we've got in it. Um, this is a latching torch function. Pull the trigger, it's on, let it go, it's off. If you set it to that, you pull the trigger, it'll stay on. You pull the trigger again, it'll turn off. Spool gun, normal gun. This is completely manual mode here. So we've got our meters a minute at the top, which is our wire feed speed. And then we've got our voltage adjustment here. So if we were using our chart inside, 
and say we've got some two mil test pieces, which we do nine meters a minute at 20 volts. So that's what it recommends for a two mil fillet weld. If I now click this Synergic button, now we've got an amperage reading. Amperage and MIG welding confuses a lot of people. Amperage and wire feed are connected. I'm gonna explain that. Easiest way to think of electric circuits is to think of it like water. This is our welding torch. This is our wire. Imagine that our wire is a bit of hose pipe. Inside that hose pipe is lots of electrons. Those electrons, or the current, that is the amperage in that piece of wire. The voltage is the driving force behind the electrons, pushing that through. So think of the voltage as water pressure, like the pressure in your tap. So the way this welder is working is you've got a circuit. This is our piece of material with our earth clamp on it here. Going back to our welding machine. This is called short circuit MIG because what happens is when this wire touches the material, it creates a circuit and it short circuits. So it's the same as when you're working on your car and you touch a screwdriver or a spanner onto your live terminal for your starter motor or something and you get a huge arc and it melts your spanner. It's the same thing, this wire is being fed through, it hits the material, makes a big spark, melts the wire and melts the material. Voltage is the force behind it, amperage is the current sat in the wire if you like, so if you increase the wire you are increasing the amperage, it's why they go up together. Our ideal looking MIG weld would have a slight crown to it and you would see the corners almost blending into the base material. Another option you might see is where you get the material which looks like it's just sat on top of the base. The other extreme to that is where it's completely concaved in or almost melting through. Then keeping in mind thinking of your voltage as pressure, if we imagine our voltage driving down this weld, you can see that if it looks like we've got a decent amount of weld being deposited, but it's not driving itself down into the base material well enough, we can increase the pressure behind it to push that weld down into the base material and try to flatten this out. If we look at this example, we can see that we might well have enough material, but the issue is we've pushed it all the way through to the point where maybe it's even coming out the other side and we've blown a hole through. If that's the case, the voltage is too high. It's trying to push that all the way through. So we can reduce the voltage and allow that to come back up. All right, so we got some two mil test pieces. We're gonna do some fillet or T-joints using the automatic Synergic settings. And then we'll use my childlike diagrams to essentially use the trim function to go from what is a guideline starting point to the absolute sweet spot. So straight out of the box, you can weld some material together and it's, it's not too bad, but there is definitely room for improvement. It's difficult to see in the camera there, but we've got a bit of a concaved weld. It's a little bit like that. And if you remember earlier, I said we want a little bit of a crown to it. Like that. If we reduce that voltage a little bit, it should crown this up. And you'll also notice something else that happens at the same time. 
So I'm going to reduce my voltage trim down by a volt. So what you should have been able to hear is a little change in pitch as well. And you can see that the second one there is concaved and that one has a little bit of a crown to it. So hopefully you could see the difference and hear the difference. If you're having trouble identifying it visually, use the sound to help you. Trim it one way, do another weld, listen to the sound, see if you can see a difference. It's either going to get better or it's going to get worse. You might find for a 2mm plate, your synergic settings are absolutely spot on. And this, I would say, is the case for a lot of these machines somewhere in their range they will have it perfect so two three mil it might be perfect you go up to five six mil suddenly you're having to make bigger swings with the trim i've never used a machine that has perfect synergic function that i do not adjust the trim anywhere so you know i've used loads of machines and they all require some degree of trimming that setting the other thing to talk about is something that I mentioned earlier about the fact that a fillet weld would require a different setting to say an outside corner joint. As an outside corner where you would, you would set this up with the inside corner edge to inside corner edge. So on a joint like that you're going to be, you've got to be considerate of just melting all the way through it. Whereas with a fillet weld very difficult to melt through it and you typically need a higher setting to drive it down in so same thickness material different application different setting Ninety amps, sixteen point eight volts. It's sort of nicely crowned over the top. I'd say that's a pretty good setting for an outside corner joint like that. So what I'm going to do now is leave this on the bench and use this as a heat sink. So that was 130 amps, 19.2 volts, so a massive difference in setting. So yeah, there we go, massive difference in setting. Uh, both two mil, just completely different applications. The material thickness isn't the only thing you have to factor in. Uh, the configuration of the joint makes a massive difference. Whether it's got something behind it makes a massive difference or whether it's suspended in open air like this outside corner was where the weld can potentially just drop through you're going to need a, a much lower setting to weld that just play around don't just do what the machine tells you as i've said they're not that clever it's just essentially a digital chart that it is uh, working through so this is actually a really good machine and the Synergic settings in it are pretty good. As I've said, some are good, some are bad. I like these little Jazzic machines. I'm giving away two of these. You can win this one for a pound. 
you can head to urchfab.com or just scan the little barcode. Uh, it's essentially how I'm helping to fund these videos. So if you found any of this useful or enjoyed watching it, then consider trying to win yourself something. 5% of the ticket sales go to the charity Shelter, which is helping people sleeping rough this Christmas to have somewhere to stay and something to eat. I have another competition going as well where you can win this epic Mark II Escort or you can have £10,000 and also another one of these machines. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, then it's well worth checking out. I've given away thousands and thousands of pounds worth of tools, equipment, cars and stuff already. So I really appreciate any tickets that I bought. If you enjoy the welding videos, uh, I've got a whole load of these planned for next year. And you'll find loads more um, stuff on all my race car builds, welding and fabrication, mechanical stuff, wiring, all kinds of stuff on my channel. So uh, check it out if you're interested. And if you're not, then don't. That's going to be it for this one. Cheers for watching. See you on the next one.